All right. Hello. Good morning, everyone. Hello, beautiful people. Good to see you there. Uh, good to see you, Tim, Brandy, <clears throat> Andreas. Happy Friday is right, huh? Hopefully you're having a good day. Thank you, uh, Claudie. And yes, uh, good old Terry White doing his live stream. You can see the full schedule below me. Hopefully you're joining me on Behance. I can, those, those are the names I'm reading. There might be some people out there on YouTube. Hop over to Behance. That'd be great. Yay, two intros. Sorry about that. Uh, quick frame. You know how it goes. One of those days, but it's all squared away. And hopefully I sound good too. So uh, we have a fun project. It's all about Photoshop uh, power shortcuts. So these are all the pro tips that I use to uh, make my life easier. So uh, yeah, would love to hear yours. I can scare you by showing you my long list. <laughs> all right, so that's the plan. I have you for an hour. You're a captive audience. Let me know where you're from and how everybody's doing. Good morning, good afternoon, I got my coffee. I was so excited about this morning. I played the intro twice, why not? All right, so, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and dive into this and uh, I will um, let you know what uh, the situation is. Oh, that did not work. Okay, there we go, there we go. I bumped into that light earlier. So let me go ahead and show you uh, as I share my screen. Uh, this is kind of what I'm working on. This is just the current project. I'm doing this Leonardo da Vinci, D for da Vinci. So uh, yeah, that's the project. I'm so far behind on 36 days of type. So um, yeah, I'm on D and I think everybody else is at like Q, just kidding. Uh, but it looks like Portugal's in the house. Felipe Gomez, supposedly we're still doing Max Europe. It's still on the schedule. Um, Marissa has a uh, easing up on traffic in Austin since there's no South by Southwest this year. Um, and yeah, fantastic. Shubham from India, cool. We're covering the globe, the sounds. Today is J, exactly, Jennifer Poole. Today is J for Jennifer. So we could also do that, but again, this is just subject matter that I'm just kind of picking out. Uh, and again, I do like kind of like designing live for you. I have some pre-made files that I can actually poke around and show you as well. So this is another one that's sort of like more fully baked. That has lots of layers, has about 80 layers, right? This is just one that I've reworked recently. So we have uh, that one and then we have this one. So I have a couple different examples to kind of dive in to and uh, I'm gonna do it right now, okay? So here's my uh, little list, not so little list, look at all that small type. Uh, I think there's a good close to 50 tips. I'm probably not gonna get to all of them, um, but I'll do my best. We'll get to a lot of them and I wanna just get to my favorite ones and make sure your Photoshop is set up is the most important part. So right here, boom, the setup, zoop, right? We'll tackle this first section, you know? It's like, if you gotta, who do, what did Abraham Lincoln say? If, if, if he needs to chop down a tree, he'll, if he needs a day to chop down the tree, a tree, he'll spend, you know, nine hours sharpening his ax and one hour chop, chopping the tree. So, so basically we're sharpening the ax is what we're doing, okay? So uh, in order to do that, we'll just kind of go in, we can go to Photoshop preferences, we'll go to, Photoshop preferences, general. We could take a look at some of these, right? You probably have these all figured out the way you want. Um, currently I have mine set to darker. I don't know if that even works well for live streams. Hopefully dark is okay. I wanna make this easy on your eyes. Maybe I go a little bit brighter. Um, did wanna point out that you can actually hold down option and shift and you can change that to bread. And that's just a fun little tip and you can hold down uh, command and shift and click and you can make toggle between toast and a latte. So that's the first fun one I'm going to show you because it's in preferences. Cool. Can you download the list? Maybe, but I'm going to wait to the end. Okay. So I'm going to wait to the end to send that out because otherwise I want you to take the, li the list and run, you know, get the class notes and then just leave. That actually sounds like a great idea, by the way. <laughs> um, but there's lots in here that we kind of need to dive into. Um, 
yeah, I kind of have everything else set up. We'll go into cursors. I have this set up to precise. I'll change this to precise. Give me just those precise crosshairs, makes it easier to see. Uh, scratch desk looks fine. We'll get into, uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. as I tilt my head, performance. So performance, this just depends on what you're working on. So right in here. Uh, you might want to optimize if you're, you know, joining, say, Terry White's and do more of his type of work where you're working on these very large images that don't have a lot of layers. Uh, use default for photos or huge pixel dimensions. That's what he should use. And look at how my cache levels change. I kind of do smaller documents, but with dozens to hundreds of layers. Okay, so you could see how my cache changes, drops it down. Uh, but uh, even changes, changes the tile size. So uh, do that, you know, the way you see fit. Click OK. That's all we need to do in there. Cool. Um, yeah, by the way, like some, some things I do like on a live stream uh, that I don't normally do in practice. Like after looking at this, you know, I said the, the cursors are usually set up to precise for me, but for live streaming, just to make it easy for you to understand what icon I'm using, I'll sometimes change it to just the standard, okay? It's why I don't use a lot of shortcuts. Typically, I try not to um, because you can't see those, right? So I think it's just easier to go and point out where things are. It's going to be easier for you to remember. Okay, so let's... Let's move on. Optimize it the way you want. Uh, as we get into uh, some more of these, let's go into like layer panel options. I can see a number of files over here, and this is especially the case for, say, this one right here, this nature file. I can kind of drill down and look at all this stuff, right? This is how I optimize my layer panel. Right over here, I can't tell where this bee eater is. Like, I don't know what it looks like. Well, we want to optimize that panel. We'll go to down to panel options. And then we want to change this because we're going to change this to something smaller because I have almost 100 layers and I'm going to change this to layer bounds. So rather than giving me a big blank square, it's going to give me the actual bee eater, which happens to be a bird. Um, and then I usually turn off these like, you know what, don't add extra clutter. I don't want to add copy to every single layer. Don't expand new effects, make everything clean. So we're making a clean layers panel, which is nice. Uh, uh, cool. All right. So yeah, downtown Oslo is a ghost town. Hey, that's cool. That's fine. Uh, I think it's a perfect chance for you guys to kind of dive in with me and hang out with me. There we are. Look, there's the bee eaters. Oh, there they are, right? Let's turn on that folder. We can see the bee eaters right over here. Guess what? I don't know where they are. You can hold down the option key. Click. Boom. Bee eater. Where's this one? Bam. Bam. Just holding down the option key or alt key if you're on a PC, right? So I can kind of jump around at will, right? clicking that works on the layer folders as well, as well as the whole image too. Cool. Pretty easy. Another thing I typically like to do, and I will navigate by the, by the way. Yeah, it's so much better than those tiny dots. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, okay, cool. Felipe, glad this is helping you out. Um, a lot of times I actually will be working in an area over here and um, I don't know where this this particular bird is at or maybe this particular um, butterfly is. So what I can do is toggle between uh, auto select turned off. So auto select turned off doesn't do anything, right? I'm only playing with the one layer. But if I turn on auto select, so let me just show you this right up here. I'm holding down the command key. That's going to toggle auto select. So while I'm working, I'm like, okay, this butterfly needs to be moved. Command click, see how it locates my layer. Now I can take this butterfly, move him over here to this leaf. So maybe it's like less prominent or whatever. Command click again. We can see we can move that back like so, okay? These are some of the easy things to do. All right, so that's cool. Hold down the command key. You can jump and click on any layer. You can hold down the option key once you know where that layer is. Bam, you can jump right to that guy and start working on it. I'm using just kind of zoom in and out. I'm panning around. By the way, here's something for you, Sig and Jordan and Steve. Um, 
You're probably using a lot of shortcuts. Okay, I could imagine. Um, and most keys are actually already kind of taken up by shortcuts. So if I hit A, excuse me, am I in here? A, that's gonna give me my arrow key. B is gonna be for brush, right? I'm gonna hit C is gonna give me the crop tool, right? We see all these tools highlight off to the side, right? Uh, what does D do? Default colors, so right down here, we're gonna hit D, default colors. Clear up to K, so all the, all the uh, letters are taken except for two. So if you wanna make some um, default um, keys, K and M are your open options. So yes, you know some of those shortcuts that I just mentioned, right? We know Command T, we know actually, what will T get me? T gives me the type tool, of course. We can customize the two letters that are still available, K and M, right? So right down here, keyboard shortcuts, we can jump in. Ah, oh, what do I wanna do? I actually want to change the fill color. Let's take a look at that. Shift F5, I wanna fill with or basically I would assign this to anything. I used to have this set up to where it filled with the foreground color and then filled with the background color, K and M. So, and it's nice because they're right next to each other on the keyboard. So you would customize that. A couple of the customizations that actually I have, um, I'm gonna talk about a couple others really fast. You ready? Um, so essentially what I end up doing is toggling between like multiple files. And then I'll sometimes change the arrangement to tile everything, because I want to see everything at once. That's when I customize this, obviously this tile selection, and then consolidate all to tabs, right? Typically how I do that is I use all the keys. When I typically, aside from K and M, when I make my own shortcuts, I know typically all the keys are not being used. So I know all I need to do is mash together, control, option, and command, and then R, and then T, right? So that's just, again, another shortcut. Boom, boom, we can jump out. We can go to, again, this file that I was working on. Boom, right there. I wanna grab uh, these birds, for instance. Boom. Let's tile back out. Let's grab these birds. Let's drop them into the Leonardo da Vinci file. Let's make sure we have some plants and flowers in there and uh, I can start working away. Cool. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, there are some keyboard shortcuts, Jan Eric, on in uh, Photoshop for iPad, but you're right, there are not many. We needed to still do a lot more work in general for Photoshop on the iPad, just so you know, as you know. I think f shortcuts kind of fall far further down on the list, okay? All right, let's take a look at some of uh, the others. Let's kind of move on. I'm trying to kind of dive into history options as well. Um, uh, a lot of times I'll kind of play with things. I'll turn things on and off. I'll maybe add an adjustment layer of some sort like that. And then I'll add another one, maybe changing the color balance, right? And this is what my files usually look like. It's like this nightmare of a situation. <laughs> That's a little much. It actually was better the way I had it. Uh, so what I'll end up doing is, let's just add uh, levels as well. Let's hit auto. Like I'll turn things on and off and I'll have a certain number. Of, I'll get it the way I like it, but the thing Photoshop doesn't remember in the history panel are the uh, turning on and off of layers. So you want Photoshop to remember that. So that's when I'd go into the history panel, history options, turn on this last one. 
Boom. Make layer visibility changes undoable, right? So it means you can undo them. So that means when I turn on and off these layers, I'll turn off this one. This is going really slow. My, my machine loves me right now. Let's get rid of that. Let's save this. Wait for it. Yeah, loving the color, uh, color grading. I like it, but I kind of like this first one, or maybe I like this version or this version. And as I select these, you can see in the history panel right down here, it actually shows me that I can actually undo that layer visibility. So when you say you like the color grading, right? I really don't know what you're referring to exactly, but I can step back through my history and maybe find the one that you like, whatever combo it was. It could be this one. This is actually pretty nice. I like this one, uh, right? So this is cool. I am actually really digging this one. Uh, this is also what I'll do, by the way, and I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but this, this looks so good. I kind of want to like save it out, right? And I know this is going to be for Instagram, I'll come up right up here, and I know I've shown this before, but a lot of people didn't know about it, I feel like, till recently. And uh, I can go into AirDrop, okay? Selecting AirDrop. And since I like this version, I'll AirDrop it to my phone. And that's where it's being sent right now. And sure enough, it's on my phone. Let's turn that around. Yep. See? Same one, right? So that's how I typically transfer files to my phone and then I'll tweak it a little more and then I'll like eventually maybe try to add some filters in in Instagram I don't know okay did you know all these options might look different for you than they do for me I might have there's airmail for instance in here you probably don't have airmail well that's all again I'm sorry this is so Mac heavy uh, but right in here if we take a look as I stall and it should be sharing, notificate and sharing. Oh yeah, it's right here, sharing, is this right? Wait for it. But basically it's set in your preferences. Mm, no, it's not, at least not quite that sharing. Uh, yeah, I'd have to take a look at that to see exactly where it is. And I'm sorry, I don't remember. I did not write down Oh, extensions, that's where it is. Here we go, in extensions, this is what I have it turned on for. So share menu, these are all the options that I have. I say, hey, you know what, I wanna share it to Evernote. I can add that right there and it will be added accordingly. All right, fantastic. I'm gonna move on, I'm gonna check out some of these other ones. Um. This is looking pretty good. Since I'm still working on this layers panel, again, power shortcuts deal with just kind of like making it easier to navigate through all this content. Um, yeah, and that's kind of what I'm thinking about right now. Uh, I could rename this. These are all kind of actually named pretty good. This, what is that? Hold down the option key, click. Oh, those are the sparkles, right? I know those are gonna be the sparkles. Let's turn those off. You can see those are just different sparkles that I'm using. Okay, they just say la layer 23, layer 22. I can always name this sparkles. Copy it, right? Hit the tab key, you'll go down to the next one. Paste sparkles. Hit tab again, butterfly is fine. This is also sparkles, boom, that's also labeled. So I labeled three layers just by hitting the tab key, right? Super easy. Um, I'm thinking that looks pretty good. What if I wanna move it to the bottom or the top? Well, I can hold Command Shift. I want those sparkles on the top. Just hit the closing bracket and let me turn on Keycaster. Let's see if this works. Come on, Keycaster. 
Does it not work with my latest update, my Mac? But basically I'm using the closing bracket, the same bracket you use to increase the brush size. So just so you can see it as I stretch this out, Um, I want the sparkles. Might be kind of hard to tell. I should probably pick a different element. But here's these fun sparkles. You know what? I'm going to move that to the bottom. Boom. Move to the bottom just by holding on the command and shift keys. I want to move it up. Just hold down the command closing bracket. That will move it up. And now it's back to where it was. Right? Let's just take this butterfly. Again, holding down the command key. Click. Here's my butterfly. It seems to be in front of everything, right? I want to put it behind everything. It's actually going to put it behind the background, but I can hold down those two keys. Shift command, open bracket, and now it's behind everything. And keep in mind, I could always move it up. So I'm moving it up, da, 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 da. moving it up to the top. You get the idea. Cool. What's up, Steve? Do you name your layers, Steve? And Mary and William and Patricia and Blake. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so, Alexander, you... Uh, yeah, I'm kind of missing some of that conversation, but I do the same thing, like... I try to name my layers, but when you get busy, you're probably not. It's something that you might have to do at the end of the process if you know you're gonna have to give the file to somebody else, right? And in general, I think this one's good. So we've gone through a couple of those. We know all about the shortcut keys for brushes and all those things. I might need to add some more depth to this, to be honest with you. Um, I really wanted to work on my Leonardo da Vinci though, this one as well. This could use some love, right? In fact, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's move this layer off to the side, kind of dive into this, because what I wanna do for this new piece, all right, let's turn off those birds. This is pretty good. Let me open up a couple other. And again, I have to remember, I only have an hour today, so that's not enough time. Here we go, Da Vinci. Oh yeah, buddy. Look at that. Let's grab a couple of those assets. Let's bring them in here. Okay, so I had this idea. The whole concept by this, behind this, Jan Eric and Philippa and everyone, is I want to have Leonardo da Vinci's head, okay? And hopefully like a good concerning pose or something. And I want to have all his ideas just kind of exploding out of his head, right? So that's the, that's the ultimate goal for this. I don't know how far I'm going to get, but let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do. First thing I do here is remove the background with one click. Thank you very much. Removes that background. That's right over here, by the way. Remove background. Right, we remove that background. We could take this Leonardo da Vinci. bring back some, right? Another shortcut key, uh, shift delete, will bring up your fill options. So we can go ahead and fill that with the foreground color to bring that piece back. Okay, for this part, I'm gonna take away a little bit of it. Let's just take away a little bit of it so it's just less conspicuous. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I really like this one though as well. He's just, yeah. I am torn which one to use. I actually like this sketch more, but this one has a little bit more depth. But boy does, look at that fashion, huh? This is high fashion right there. Look at that hat. That's something else. 
Um, I think we will go with this one right here, right? We'll take this, break it down. You know what we're going to do is we're going to chop out the rest of the body. So this brings me to uh, sort of outlining text, right? So we can hit P for the pen tool. We can grab that pen tool. We can start clicking around, right? You guys know how this works. I'm going to do this pretty fast, but I'm going to show you some situations as I kind of come into this, right? I'm doing pretty well so far. Oh, I accidentally messed up down here. I actually clicked out way too far. Well, since I haven't lit up on my mouse, I can hold on the space bar. I could pick up that point and I can bring it down into position like that, right? So that's what I'm doing. Space bar will do what you need to do. Boom, 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 boom. Zoop, zoop. High fashion, this Leonardo da Vinci, high fashion. So stylish and inventing all the things. Did you know he invented the computer? Yeah, I'm just kidding. But I wouldn't be surprised if he did. But no, he did not invent the computer. All right, let's just go around like so. Okay, yeah, I get it. It was a shape layer. This could just as easily be um, a path layer, right? I just made that really fast. Guess what? Hold down the command key, click, boom. There we are. Uh, and then we'll subtract from that bottom part. Right, I want to show you something else with the pen tool as I was working on that. And if I want to select kind of more of it or, or change any of this with the pen tool. So let's kind of come in here. There's this part that I need to kind of take care of. Okay, P for pen, I come in here. Um, wanted to turn on, in your settings, rubber band. So right up here, if you can see this. Uh, yeah, he invented the helicopter. That's right, his flying machine is awesome. I have his flying machine on a layer, so we'll deal with that. But check this out, path options. Here we can change the color and all that fun stuff. Turn on rubber band in here, right? So we turn on rubber band. Now it kind of forecasts, see right there, it forecasts where the line is gonna go next. So it can be like, boom. That's especially helpful if you have anything with a Bezier point, it really starts to forecast where that next line will be, right? Like that. Um, if I hold down the command key, I can go back and fix any edit that I want, right? Go back, fix that edit come through here. This is the part I wanted to clean up. I'm just trying to smooth it out. Something like that. We'll just kind of have it go through these ridges around like so. Always kind of forecasting that line. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Boom, boom, bam. Do your thing. Photoshop, clean that up. Da Vinci, let's have his brain explode with awesome ideas. Okay. He also invented the Mona Lisa. Somebody's got jokes. Oh, I would love to get a hold of the submarine. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look. Out there, did a quick search uh, across multiple areas. Did it in the Rijksmuseum, Leonardo da Vinci. We have some of these sketches that I actually want to get in. Like, look at look at some of these, though. These are just crazy. What is he? What was he thinking? Look at this. What, what is this exactly? I don't know the full background. But some of these faces are just kind of silly. You know what? We'll download them. Why not? We'll download them. We'll remix them. We'll see what else we have in here. Sure, this isn't the full... Um, oh yeah, let's get some of this stuff. We'll get some paintings. I want to have some books in there. Some like notebooks that are like flying out. It's going to look awesome. Come on, buddy. Do me good. Doesn't like that one. I don't know why I didn't like that one. Ah, some of these, look at these crazy faces.
Look at this stuff. There you go. These were his grandparents. Uh, yeah. There's a sketch of a submarine in King Tut's burial chamber. Fascinating, I did not know that. Let's clean it up, clean it up. This is, why did I pick such a weird picture? Why? I don't know. Sometimes if you're trying to scale something down, command T and then command zero will zoom out, allow you to grab this handle. But honestly, if something's too large, I do command T and I'm like, yeah, it's really large. I just jump up here and I know I need to knock this down by at least 50%, right? Like so, there it is. Those people are probably not gonna make the cut. See what else we have. We have the horses. I have his, that's actually uh, convert to smart object. That's actually just kind of like my take on his signature, really is not his. There's the Mona Lisa, we can put that in a frame. Um, yeah, he was also a character designer as well, yes. Yeah, let's have all these. Some of these will serve as paper. Uh, I, I think it'd be fun just to have some sparkles and some plants and different things kind of pop out of his head too, uh, is the current plan. But I still want to kind of remain on task with the goal at hand, which is to tell you all about these 50 things that we have going on. And guess what? I didn't lose you because I've already been talking about the pen tool. Um, you could restore last sec selection just by com uh, pressing Command, Shift, and D. So if you ever click off, you could always obviously get the re that selection. Um, I haven't done any brushing, so we'll get into that in a little bit. Uh, this is something that will happen later as well. Um, and, and we could do a step and a repeat as well. Um, there's all the other shortcuts that I was dealing with. Uh, when you're working on a mask, it'll change it to black and white if you hold down the Alt key. Again, I haven't played a lot with masks yet because I need to get some more content in here. Let's actually also look at uh, Adobe Stock Photos and I actually grabbed a couple of them. Here we go. Let's drop in this one. There we are. The heart. There we are, right? Happens to be, I think, a vector heart. I knew it. If you're wondering in CC libraries, look, there is no indication that says that this is, at least at first glance, that it's a, a, a vector element. You can roll over it and it says created in Adobe Illustrator. But what you could actually do is come up here and show item in a list and it will tell me sure enough, oh, at quick glance, that's an Illustrator file. Ah, yes. Man of a... 50,000 jobs. Way too many. Can we say that? Way too many jobs. Let's just take one of these hearts. He invented the heart. Did you know that? It's amazing, this guy. This does it all. All right. I'm actually an illustrator. I get it. This is not an illustrator stream, but you know what? This is a handy little tool I don't see a lot of people using. Too many times you'll select things with a marquee, <laughs> right? Just using selection tools and you accidentally grab something else. Like, oh, I don't want that. Go right over here. It's this lasso tool, just like you have in Photoshop. So even though this is Photoshop stream, you're learning about Photoshop, you're actually learning a little bit of Illustrator because the Illustrator has a lasso tool as well. Actually, I want to select this one. I don't, I don't know what that little flap of lettuce is doing there. I didn't know our uh, heart had leaves, <laughs> but apparently it does. Uh, tch -tch -tch. There it is. Shortcut we learned earlier. Um, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I can go into uh, swatches. And uh, this brings me to this next segment, because right now, actually what I want to do is I want to take this um, heart 
And uh, actually, you know what? I really like this color. I'm gonna take this element, which happens to be this wing, if I could find it. Guess what? I can find it if I just hold down the command key and then click on that layer. Oh, there it is. It's this illustration, right? I can hold down the option key and click on that eyeball and it'll turn everything else off and keep the wing on. But what I wanna do is I actually wanna change it to a brown, right? I'm gonna use that same brown for everything. The good brown is gonna be this one right here, okay? So for this one, I could drop it right on that, oh. I could drop it right on that uh, particular uh, illustration. Another way of doing this is I could double click and add this as a color overlay, right? Right in there. Oops. And go with that color clicking right there. So in one case, it adds it as a layer style. The other case adds it actually as this swatch. I don't like this swatch because I wanna keep, I just, I just wanna keep this clean, you know? I'm already gonna have a zillion layers. You're gonna learn how to just like keep it really simple. But from there, check this out. Just like with most things over here, I wanna copy this color overlay up to this vector smart object, which happens to be the heart, right? What do I do? Hold down the option key, click, drag, and then it applies it right there as well. So option key will do all the copying that you need. This also goes for, say for instance, um, if I had a fun pattern, for instance, like this pattern right here, like this Da Vinci pattern, Command J to jump that layer. But uh, I wanna actually apply that layer mask to it. Option, drag, boom, it gets applied. And now we can see that that's inside his current head. But again, I'm just using, I'd probably use that just as a pattern, potentially. And by the way, he's not quitting with this, lay this, this, this hat. Like, look at this, here's his hat again. That was like, Oh, super interesting. All right, just checking time. This might come in handy, kind of adding this texture here. It may or may not. That's okay. Let's add some fun to the background. Okay. He also invented Da Vinci Resolve. Da Vinci, I forget what Da Vinci Resolve is. Is it video? I can't remember. Hello, Lindsay. Oh, how about using his mirrored writing? Yeah, if you can figure out how to put that in, I would, how to convey that, that'd be great. So here's this balloon. We'll definitely use this guy. That would be really good to use. We have this sketch as well. So I kind of want to play with some of these sketches too. Okay, so that's the plan. Let's play with some of these sketches. Save it to my library. Okay, so let's move on. Too much to do. Let's take this particular. This is going to be our horse layer. Convert it to a smart object. For this smart object, uh, I'll probably like shrink it down. I'll rotate it. I want it to look like paper, right? So it's gonna kind of fly away, something like that. It needs to be tinted differently. Uh, a couple different ways to kind of like bend this. In fact, I would actually undo this. I'd keep this flat. I'd go into warp, okay? An easy way to get to this is I usually do command T and then if you right click, oh, warp is right here. So we can warp this, right? And just kind of bend this ever so slightly to make it look a little bit more uh, like paper, right? So that's the goal. We'd need to add shading to this as well. I get it, uh, you know, and we would, but let's just kind of being even more drastic with this, All right? This is one way to do paper. I have another way as well that I wanna show you. Might make it a little, a little more flat, but a little more dynamic. We'll just wait for my computer to stop thinking.
Okay. Good times. Let's quit out of Illustrator. We don't need Illustrator. This is a Photoshop stream. But as you know, I've been running out of out of RAM lately. It's been tough. It's been hard. If that ever happens to you, you can always go in here and clear history, right? Clearing history means I can't go back, but you know what? I'm confident there is no looking back here, right? Now I can save this and it's gonna save fine. So you have an issue saving, you run out of RAM, stuff like that. Just clear out your history and you'll be good to go. Okay, so we'll go back in there, Command T, boom. Right click, warp it, warp it. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Kind of like this. Nothing too crazy. There we go. We want to paint on this as well. So we'll go into the layers panel. We'll add a layer on top. It's going to have a clipping mask, right? So we'll just call this shading. Hit B for brush. Oh yeah, I desperately need to change this back. At least for this, we're going to make the painting cursors normal brush tip. There we go. Now we can see it. Let's add a little bit of highlight down the middle. Flow is at 14%. Kind of paint that in like so. All right, let's take a look at something. I'm going to go to the brushes and the brush settings. Here's my brushes. Here's brush settings. Uh, we can see the size, the hardness, the spacing. And we could use see the brush that I'm actually using as well. Okay. Uh, yeah, this kind of has everything kind of squared away as is. Typically what I'll do is I'll save this brush. If I ever turn on or, or add to the shape dynamics, I really don't need to do anything in here just yet. Uh, but I will in a second, hopefully. Because basically I want to be able to turn on or lock down features. So if I decide to have some jittering or uh, add another brush to it, or if I want color dynamics, I can always lock down those settings and it's gonna keep those settings regardless of which brush I pick. All right, but honestly, everything looks fine. I just typically make my own brushes and I have one called Softy and then uh, another one called Hardy because <laughs> I typically just toggle between those two, right? But I'm just adding a little highlight there. We'll change this to like overlay, right? looks somewhat good. We'll actually flip that to something dark and we'll just kind of add some dark tones. Just trying to give this a little bit of flavor, right? Still doesn't have any depth to this paper, right? So I would actually just kind of jump in, add another clipping mask. Because even though you think paper doesn't have depth, it actually does. And that's actually really what's gonna sell this, right? We'll hit B for brush. We'll go to the hardy, right? We'll use our bracket keys, to take this on down. Right, there's other options for that as well. Uh, let's go in here and let's just make this, give this a nice edge and let's take down the flow a lot as well. Because light should catch like the edge, just like the, the tip of these pages, just the edge, right? So that's all we would want right there. Another way to do this is take that particular layer, jump it, and here I have an offset version. For this version, I can go to levels and increase the brightness like so. And there we can have that offset like that, right? So you get the idea. Cool, cool. Um, this is not the illustration I actually wanted to use. I wanted to use one of the ones that I got off of Adobe Stock. So let's go to my library panel right over here. Is this it? 
Oh yeah, there's the one. Let's license this image. It's a little cooler than horses. He did not invent horses. All right. Uh, done. Right. There it is. Let's drop in all of his fun experiments rather than just a horse. That was just a placeholder image. This is the one I want. Close that. Close that. There's a piece of paper. Let's take all these elements. Convert it to a smart object. Shrink it down. There you go, buddy. There's a piece of paper. Let's take down the hue and saturation. Like that. Because my goal is to have him really uh, kind of gray. And I'm going to convert him to a smart object. Shrink him down. He had such a funky hat that I need to get rid of. Uh, yeah, I could use uh, use Mona Lisa as well. I want to, I'm kind of trying to figure out if I should like cut off his hat or if I should kind of cut into that a little bit. But let me go back to my tips just to make sure I'm covering everything. Um, I'll get into Puppet Warp because I'm going to have some fun things going around in there. Uh, I've already done a lot of these, my own um, shortcuts right here. So we get that. Uh, fill objects with foreground and background color, uh, alt backspace, um, or command backspace for background. We did this, we did this. Uh, you could do a cl command click and drag to select multiple elements. We've kind of sorted through layers. Um, we did this. Oh, this is very good. If you have two vector shapes with effects and you want them to look combined, you can put them in their own layer group. So doing that really fast, let's go over to our new shapes panel. Here's some shapes. I don't know what these would be for, for Leonardo da Vinci. I really don't know, but let's just grab this one for instance, bring that out. Let's change its color to just something like that, All right? And Let's add some text in here. Okay, so this is the situation we would run into. Let me change this font. Ah, really fast. Let's just say Leo. There we go, Leo, there you are, buddy. All right, so. We have this text, we have this shape. Um, if I put a stroke around it, it's not gonna be connected, especially if we have this in both places, right down here. I'm gonna bring it over to the second one and let me check my blend modes. All right, taking that stroke, option key, dragging it down. I've added it, I've added it to both right there. But in this case, I actually want Leo and these two to kind of be connected. So that's when I take those both, Command G in the same folder, and this will be called the Leo brand. We'll take a look at these, we'll twirl this down, and we'll notice right in here, oop, zero. Right in here, I'll take this one effect, Option key and we'll drag it to the folder. Now it's it 
being applied to the folder, right? Now let me just remove these two. Boom. Boom. There we go. So now I can kind of move these in and out and it's connected like I want it to be. All right. Leo, this is a horrible design, Paul. You just tell me, it's horrible. This all needs help. Right, this whole thing needs, needs a little bit of TLC, right? It's kind of hard to create great art and um, also cover pro tips as well. Um, so that's kind of what I'm realizing. Here's Mona Lisa, by the way. Let's convert her to a smart object. Somebody mentioned adding her, so here she is. Uh, we could always take uh, a, a flat image and we can turn it into a 3D postcard, okay? So basically we can put it on a flat plane, right? So now it's on a flat plane. Now I can rotate it. This is a case where this is a, a painting, so it's gonna, it's gonna be flat. But now I can, rather than kind of manipulating it other ways, I actually can kind of rotate it around and have some fun with it here. So in this case, it's gonna maybe be at an angle. We wanna move it up over here like that. That's what it would be. We want it to be a little bit smaller. Let's make it a little smaller, move it over. Maybe it needs to be over here actually. Kind of like that. Okay, now that's flying out like so. And the great thing is it's a smart object. So I could jump in to that particular layer, knowing that this layer, it is now um, a texture on a flat layer. So let's take a look at it. Here's that flat layer and here it is being applied as a texture. Because what I'm thinking is I actually need a frame. Uh, picture frame. Yeah, Leo does need to be a script, but honestly, I needed to get rid of, I need to freaking do so much, it's just so bad. Um, like with a lot of these, it, the reason I'm going to Adobe Stock is look, for the price of like licensing one image, I get like 15 frames. I'll just license this one. I get not really 15, but there's easily 10 frames right in here that I can go ahead and use, right? It's being synced right now. There it is. Let's open it up. Let's grab a fancy one. I don't know if it has a, a particular frame that it's known to be in, but this is the one I'm gonna take right here if this works for you. Paste it in here. Let's make it fancy. Right in here, this is actually kind of getting in the way, so um, I could actually turn off the UV overlay. Turning off that UV overlay, it's easier to see. And now I can see this part. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Boom, boom, boom. Scale it. You get the idea. Probably needs a little bit of shading. B for brush. X to flip those colors, right? increase the size of that brush. And I could right click and make sure, oh, actually I actually want a softy. Just a little, just needs a little bit of shading right in here, right? Those are the details that I would probably get carried away with. Let's take this, select it, let's contract it a little bit. Contract two pixels, invert, command shift I, delete, done. We got rid of that uh, little haze. Let's save that. We'll jump back out. We can see there it is in the frame. We still have an issue because that frame should be 3D and uh, it just doesn't quite look right. So you know what I'd actually do there is I probably would use something like dimension, all right? Okay, let's go back in. There's the frame. In general, you get the idea. It just needs a lot more depth, but uh, we'll save that for another day. Already that's, that's looking better, right? So you kind of understand what we're doing here for this uh, composite. Ah, uh, sweet, we have that in place. We, I probably want to 
uh, really play with his head after a while. So I'd probably even duplicate him and uh, follow the curves. And yeah, you know what? I'd use my lasso tool. Let's turn this off. Actually, you know, should I do this? I Literally, I'm out of time. I don't have time for this. I do not have time. I'm getting carried away with this design. But since you've all been great sports, um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, post this to, uh, to Twitter, actually. So Paul Tranny, P-A-U-L-T-R-A-N-I, I'll post a link uh, to Twitter for all these tips. I didn't even get into the sharing aspect, being able to inspect a PSD in the browser and uh, stuff like that would be pretty awesome. But Jason's turn is up right now, so I'm gonna let you go. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you soon.